Can assess the flectometry is a relatively new remote sensing technique. And because we are talking about the first experiment from a satellite receiver have been developed in the last 10 years. So the idea is that once GNSSS reflectometry is developed more, we will be able to design and to manage some geophysical product that will be continuously delivered to the scientific community, as is the case of the data generated by scatterometers or synthetic aperture radars. Hi, I'm Stephanie Tumampos and you're listening to Down to Earth, the show where we talk to incredible geoscientists about their science and its impacts on our planet. Today, we're learning about Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry, or GNSSR, a remote sensing technique that uses something old to deliver something new. This episode of Down to Earth comes from the Modeling and Remote Sensing Technical Committee of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society. The Modeling and Remote Sensing Technical Committee provides a technical and professional forum for advancing the science of predicting remotely sensed observations from first principles theory. To learn more about this technical committee and how you can get involved, visit their website at grss-ieee.org slash technical committees. I am very passionate about electromagnetic modeling. I have got a PhD in electromagnetics in 2015. And then I started my research activity on applied electromagnetics and remote sensing. This is Dr. Davide Comite. He's a postdoctoral researcher at Sapienza University of Rome, where, as you heard, he studies applied electromagnetics in remote sensing. Davide has a particular interest in how we can use existing satellite systems for new applications in remote sensing research, which is why Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry, otherwise known as GNSSR, has recently caught his attention. I believe there is a great potential to improve different remote sensing techniques, and especially the GNSSS reflectometry, by uh, performing and studying and designing more advanced electromagnetic uh, modeling approaches. So this makes this research activity, in my opinion, very interesting and very exciting. As Davida mentioned, there are lots of opportunities for GNSSR. With more and more GNSS transmitting satellites being launched into space, the use of simple receiver instruments to collect these signals of opportunity provides a cost-effective way of gathering global coverage data with high temporal acquisition in all weather conditions. What is uh, the Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry and how does it work? Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry is a, a relatively new remote sensing technique uh, which is based on the exploitation of the signal transmitted by satellite system that have been originally designed for navigation purposes. So the idea, the basic idea, is to exploit this so-called signal of opportunity to collect the reflection generated by the Earth's surfaces. In that way, we are able to inquire and to study about the geophysical features of the illuminated region. These surfaces can be the ocean, or an agricultural soil, or a bare soil, or a forest, or even an icy region that is very common at high latitude of, the, of our planet. So the idea is to study the reflections from the illuminated surfaces to get information about quantities such as the, the wind over the ocean, or the soil moisture over a bare soil, or even about the amount of biomass that is present over the illuminated region. So we are dealing with a very interesting remote sensing technique that can complement other more conventional and well-established approaches. So what makes GNSSR unique res with respect to other remote sensing technologies when it comes to, say, you said about ocean surface studies or soil moisture detection? The remote sensing of Earth, uh, which is uh, very commonly referred as Earth observation, it's possible through um, a number of remote sensing techniques. Uh, with Genesis R reflectometry, we are referring to the parts of the Earth observation that make use of microwaves. Microwaves are electromagnetic waves 
located in the lower region of the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, thanks to this possibility and in particular working at L band we can expect to penetrate a little bit the medium under analysis as an example uh, if you are flying over a forest you can imagine uh, to penetrate uh, the vegetation and uh, to reach the, the soil that is below the below the forest. If you are uh, illuminating a bare soil, you can expect to, to penetrate a little bit in the order of some centimeters the, the, the soil that is under analysis. And this will give you some uh, information as an example about the soil moisture state of the first centimeters of the illuminated soil. Uh, the difference of this technique with respect to other uh, more conventional remote sensing technique is essentially related to the fact that we do not need to transmit a signal, but we can collect the reflection that are generated by other transmitted for a different purposes, which is in that case the navigation purposes. So the unique opportunity and the unique value of the GNSSR technique is related to the fact that we need to design and we need to place on board the satellite just a receiver. We do not need a transmitter. Okay, so you mentioned that GNSSR is a fairly new technique. What are some of the challenges that have been encountered in GNSS reflectometry so far? Okay, so one of the most important challenges related to the Genesis R remote sensing technique is related to the calibration of data. Calibration is a very well-known uh, engineering process and is related to the uh, transformation, let's say, of uh, physical quantities measured by the instrument to the physical observables that we would like to characterize. Uh, another important challenge is the modeling of Genesis S reflected signals. Every time a new mission is designed, ESA requires the design of a so-called end-to-end simulator. An end-to-end -end simulator is essentially software uh, designed to accurately uh, reproduce the signal that will be collected by the receiver uh, that is on board a satellite that is flying at a certain altitude with a certain velocity and keeping a certain attitude. So the challenge related to the simulation of the Genesis R reflected signal is associated to the, the need of uh, carefully and accurately modeling all the involved phenomena. Typically, this is done by applying the radar equation, but uh, depending on uh, the geometry, depending on the application, depending on uh, the need of simulating just power or of simulating also power and uh, amplitude and phase of the reflected signal, this activity could become very challenging. So why is research on GNSSR modeling important? Research in GNSSR modeling is very important because we need to find practical, let's say, and alternative ways to understand data and to model uh, data. By performing modeling, and uh, in, our, in my case, electromagnetic modeling, you are able to simulate the, the signal reflected by the Earth's surfaces by including a significant number of realistic elements. As an example, you can simulate the Genesis S reflection by including the draw of the antenna pattern of the receiving antenna. You can include uh, the noise of the receiving system and of the receiver, essentially, that is uh, collecting the reflection. But you can also include and model different aspects of the illuminated surfaces because of course you you should expect a different response of the illuminated region if you consider different surfaces the response of uh, the ocean would be different with respect to the response of a bare soil or of, of an agricultural soil or of a vegetated soil so one important part of the modeling activity in this framework is related to the proper representation of the target that is under analysis. Coming up, Davida tells us about an exciting new mission that's going to help scientists expand the field of GNSSR while giving us new data on the Earth's hydrological climate information. Are you looking to make an impact in geoscience and remote sensing science? Then consider joining one of the Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society's technical committees. From environmental analysis to spaceborne imaging spectroscopy, each technical committee advances innovative research and technology in a specific field of remote sensing. 
By joining, you'll connect with a community of passionate researchers and professionals who are fostering important international collaborations and steering global research agendas. You'll also gain access to the latest news and state-of-the-art research in the field. Expand your network, enhance your career, and make a difference. Join a GRSS technical committee today by visiting grss-ieee.org slash technical committees. Welcome back. Today, we've been speaking with Dr. Davide Comite, postdoctoral researcher at Sapienza University of Rome, about Global Navigation Satellite System Reflectometry, or GNSSR. As a reminder, GNSSR uses signals from navigation satellite constellations to measure reflections off of Earth's surfaces. These reflected signals are faint, but can provide important and relevant information about biomass, soil moisture, and permafrost freeze or thaw. What makes GNSSR unique is the fact that it uses signals of opportunity from existing constellations like GPS and Galileo, and it does so with small, low-power receivers. This means that GNSSR signals have excellent coverage while also being less expensive than a SAR mission. As previously mentioned, GNSSR is a relatively new technique in remote sensing. It was first proposed in 1988 for multi-static scatterometric applications when GPS, the U.S. Global Navigation Satellite System, was the only available system for GNSSR applications. As part of expanding knowledge about GNSSR and its benefits, ESA, the European Space Agency, has invested in scout satellite missions. Their goal is to test the capability of small satellites to deliver value-added science through making technology smaller or applying new remote sensing techniques. Recently, ESA approved a new mission called HydroGNSS, which is meant to test GNSSR for measuring key hydrological climate variables. So, of course, we were so excited to find out that Davide is one of the founding scientists involved with this mission. We've heard that a new Earth observation mission is being developed called HydroGNSS. Yes, indeed. I had the honor to be involved in uh, the design and development of the HydroGNSS scout mission since the very beginning. I'm working on HydroGNSS uh, since uh, two years, and uh, we worked to develop the, the mission and we are now pushing this mission through all the needed phases before the, the final launch of the satellite. That's exciting. Can you tell us more about this mission? What is HydroGNSS and what does it aim to measure? HydroGNSS is based on the, the design of a small satellite carrying on a board a receiving system that is uh, properly designed to collect GNSS reflections from the Earth. The proposal of the scout mission was originally prepared to provide observation and information about both the ocean and about land surfaces. So it's a very complete GNSS reflectometry mission and is also of great interest because it is uh, designed to cover the high latitude uh, regions of the Earth's surfaces, which is not the case for the Cygnus mission. Uh, that was originally designed for a different scope. So the idea will be to design, and we are doing that, a dual polarizing receiving system so that we can collect two different orthogonal polarization. And with two, these two different orthogonal polarization, if the signal to noise ratio is uh, enough high for the two channel, for the two orthogonal polarization, we can expect to improve the estimation of the biogeophysical parameters that are of interest. So there are a lot of uh, exciting activities that uh, we will perform around the design and the management of the hydrogenesis mission, and we are very excited. This is a very cool opportunity to expand GNSSR as a remote sensing technique. So what stage is the hydrogenesis mission at? We just started uh, the development of the hydrogenesis mission, and we are starting the actual design of this new space mission. During these two years, we will update uh, our uh, simulators because we have developed in the past uh, at Sapienza University a simulator of Genesis as reflected signals. We will update these simulators uh, as dictated by the requirements of this mission. And we will work in collaboration with all the research group to advance this simulator and to provide 
an accurate modeling of both the incoherent and of the coherent channel of the HydroGNSS satellite. So you already mentioned some of the components of the HydroGNSS mission, like the dual polarizing receiving system, that make it pretty unique from other missions. Are there any other special features of HydroGNSS that you can share with our listeners? Uh, one interesting aspect about the design of HydroGNSS is the fact that it's based on the design of a small satellite. Just to give you an idea, the small satellites are characterized by a reduced cost with respect to the more conventional platform. Just to give you an idea, the synthetic aperture radar would require a development cost in the order of 100 or 200 millions of dollars, whereas for uh, hydrogen SS, the budget uh, is smaller than uh, 30 million of euro. So there is an important difference between small satellites and development of larger satellites that carry on synthetic aperture radar or uh, radiometer. This is a very, a very important aspect. Of course, uh, as an engineer, we know that we cannot expect exactly the same performance. The performance that are achievable with a radiometer or with a, a synthetic aperture radar uh, will be generally better with respect to the one uh, achieved by a Genesis S reflectometry mode sensing technique. The difference is, uh, and the interest actually, is related to the fact that uh, Genesis S reflectometry can uh, complement the data uh, provided by other uh, more conventional and more established platforms. That's very true. And it's important that we keep learning from different techniques so we can continue to build our knowledge about the Earth and how it's changing. So I want to ask, in your opinion, where do you think GNSSR will be in 10 years? This is a a very important question indeed, because as we were saying before, GNSSR reflectometry is a relatively new remote sensing technique. And if you think to other conventional remote sensing techniques for Earth observation, such as uh, the use of radiometers or, or the use of scatterometers and of synthetic aperture radar, these sensors, uh, these instruments, thanks to the design and to the management of a number of space missions from European Space Agency or from NASA, are providing a large set of data which are well calibrated and are uh, disseminated through internet uh, to the scientific community. There is uh, this service that is called Copernicus and Copernicus was designed to uh, deliver to the scientific community or to other users data collected by missions that are managed by the Copernicus service itself. So uh, in 10 years we can hope that GNSSR reflectometry missions will be designed and managed by the European Commission and by the European Space Agency so that a big set of geophysical quantities will be delivered through the Copernicus service. This is not the case for now because we are still studying the potential of the GNSSR reflectometry but hopefully it will be possible in 10 years from now. Well, that's all for this episode of Down to Earth. To learn more about HydroGNSS and GNSSR in general, connect with Dr. Davide Comite on LinkedIn or visit isa.int and search for HydroGNSS. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and send some love to our sponsors at IEEE underscore GRSS on Twitter and Instagram and IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing on Facebook and LinkedIn. This episode was produced by Nicole Bedford from Nicole Bedford Films with help from me, Stephanie Tomampos. Graphics and design by Mylene Briggs of Killa Media. And a special thanks to Fabio Pachifici and Keely Roth for their support. I'm Stephanie Tomampos and you've been listening to Down to Earth.